Fischer projections will be the topic of this lesson, and we're right smack in the middle of a chapter on isomers and stereochemistry, and we just had a lesson on molecules that have multiple chiral centers, and we'll find out that Fischer projections here are commonly used on molecules that have multiple chiral centers. If you're new to the channel, my name is Chad, and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to make science both understandable and maybe even enjoyable. Now, this is my brand new organic chemistry playlist. I'll be releasing these lessons weekly throughout the 2020-21 school year, so if you don't want to miss one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications. You'll be notified every time I post a lesson. So now we want to take a look at Fisher projections, named after Emil Fisher, who did a lot of uh, sugar chemistry back in the day. So a lot of research in that regard. And a Fisher projection is just another way of looking at a chiral center. Now it turns out a lot of sugars have a lot of chiral centers. And a, a nice convenient way of representing a molecule with a lot of chiral centers comes down to these Fisher projections. And it's just a different perspective of looking at a tetrahedral atom. Instead of looking at a tetrahedral atom as having, you know, two bonds in the plane, one wedge, and one dash, it actually tries to look at it from a different perspective. And if, like, let's say we put our eyeball, instead of looking at it head on like here, we might put our eyeball up here. And then looking at it from this perspective, both of these carbons would be coming towards you and would be look like wedges. And then both of these carbons would be going away from you, if they're carbons anyways, and they'd be looking like dashes. And so instead of looking at it with two bonds in the plane, one wedge and one dash, what you see with a Fisher projection is two wedges coming towards you, two dashes going away from you. And you're just looking at a different, uh, slightly different perspective at a tetrahedral atom. All right, and so with a Fisher projection, we just draw straight lines, and you're supposed to know that in any properly drawn Fisher projection, that the horizontal bonds correspond to the wedged ones coming out at you, and the vertical ones correspond to the dashed bonds going away from you. So a couple different ways to look at this. A lot of people remember this by looking like the wedged bonds here. Those look like a bow tie, and if that works for you, fantastic. If you have no idea what a bow tie is, well, then that's not going to work for you. And so my personal favorite way is to look at it as your arms or grandma arm specifically coming out to hug you so they're on the horizontal and it's grandma's hugs coming to hug you that is your perspective you're looking at here cool so in this case with one chiral center you know you'll see it on occasion we will see it with like amino acids sometimes drawn and stuff like this but again it's often molecules with multiple chiral centers well we'll see this so if we take a look at one very famous one here All right, so this molecule right here is D-glucose. So super common for you to study this in a biochemistry context. So also often part of sugar chemistry towards the end of the organic chemistry curriculum for some classes. Some students never quite get here. So, but this is D-glucose and it has four chiral centers in its structure and why it's often represented with these Fisher projections. And again, Fisher projections are named after Emil Fisher who did a lot of sugar research on sugar molecules and stuff. And so he, he's kind of the one that pioneered using these structures to representing our sugar molecules. So, but it's also really convenient. If you look at a chiral center, so if you recall, so when you've got two bonds in the plane, a wedge and a dash. So we normally assign R and S with your lowest priority group in the dashed position. However, if your lowest, your number four priority group is in the wedge, it's just opposite of where the way it looks from your perspective. But if you recall, it was a super pain in the butt when your number four priority was in one of the planes or one of the bonds in the plane. It was a pain in the butt. We had to you know, do a little extra work to figure out if it was R S. What's nice about a Fisher projection is that there are no bonds in the plane. From that perspective, everything is either a wedge or everything is either a dash. And it makes it super convenient that we never have to worry about that third scenario where the number four priority is in the plane and we gotta do something special to figure out RS. Your number four priority is either gonna be a wedge or it's gonna be a dash. And if your number four priority is a dash, well then a right-handed turn means R and a left-handed turn means S. And if your number four priority is a wedge, then it's the opposite because you're looking at the molecule from the wrong perspective. Well, because all of them are represented this way, it makes it pretty easy to assign R and S. So if we take a look, and again, you want to get really good at assigning R and S. So for this carbon right here, this chiral center, that oxygen would be number one. This carbon with two bonds to an oxygen, instead of just one bond to an oxygen, would be number two. So one, two, three, and going around, this is a left-handed turn, but my number four priority is a wedge. And so instead of a left-handed turn meaning S, this case, it's going to mean R. 
Okay, so there's one of them. Let's go to the next one here. So again, the oxygen would be number one. So the carbon up top would be number two and this carbon three. So one, two, three, and it looks like an R, a right-handed turn. But again, your number four priority group is a wedge on the horizontal. And so instead of being R, it's going to be S. Same thing on the next one, number one, number two, number three. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And it looks like a left-handed turn. But once again, your lowest priority group is on a horizontal position, a wedge. And so instead of being a left-handed turn, meaning S, it's going to mean R. And finally, last one here. So oxygen's number one, the carbon up top is number two. And then the carbon down below is number three. So one, two, three, and it looks like S, but once again, it's really R. Your number four priority is on the horizontal A wedge. Cool, so we just assigned R and S really quickly. And once again, we'd never had to worry about our number four priority being a bond in the plane, because from this perspective, there are no bonds in the plane. They're all wedges or they're all dashes. And it makes assigning R and S really quick. Cool, so that's your Fisher projection. Now, one thing you should note is oftentimes what they'll want you to do with something like this is convert this Fisher projection into a bond line structure. So if we take a look at this, this is one, two, three, four, five, six carbons long. So one, two, three, four, five, six. At one end, there is an aldehyde here. And here's where the real fun begins. So this carbon right here has an OH. And notice, let's just number the chain here. We'll do that in blue. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so carbon one is good to go. Carbon six is good to go. Notice carbon six doesn't have four different groups because it has two identical H's. So I didn't have to worry about anything here. But for carbons two, three, four, and five, they both have an H and an OH. And I've got to show some stereochemistry. Well, that's going to kind of suck. So what I'm going to first do is just draw in the OH. We don't have to draw in the H. So, and the problem is I just need to know if the OH is a wedge or a dash so that the R and the S works out appropriately. Now we have a problem here with when you draw a proper bond line structure and you show the wedges and dashes, that is a real three dimensional representation of a molecule. But the Fisher projection, when it has more than one chiral center, is not an accurate three-dimensional portrayal of the entire molecule. You can look at any one chiral center at a time, and it's an accurate three-dimensional representation of just that chiral center. But once you've got many of them, you can only look at one at a time, it turns out. Because take a look at this. This carbon right here looks over at the H and says, oh, okay, you're a wedge. You're out in front of the board. You're out in front of me, if you will. And he looks over at this OH and says the same thing. You're out in front of me. And he looks up at this carbon, though, and he says, you're a dash. You're behind the board. You're behind me. And same thing with this carbon down here. He says, you're behind me as well, because you're both on dashes. Okay, so that seems logical enough and seems totally true and accurate. And so this carbon does the same thing. He says, yep, this OH and the H, they're out in front of me, but these two carbons are behind me. And this carbon says, no, 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 just a minute ago, I told you that you were behind me. And this carbon's like, no, 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 I'm telling you that you're behind me. Well, they both think the other is a dash and should be behind them. And the problem is that, again, you can look at any one chiral center on a fish projection at a time and life is good but it's not an actual perfect three-dimensional representation of the entire molecule. And so it's great for assigning R and S, but if you want to get a good accurate portrayal of what the actual molecule as a whole looks like, you really should be looking at one of these bond line structures. And so if you want to turn one of these into one of these, you're going to have some difficulty because this is a real three-dimensional portrayal of the molecule and this is not. And so a couple different approaches you can take, but my favorite is just make the R's and the S's work out. Assign R and S, and make sure it works out the same. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start and just guess that they're all wedges. That's what I'm gonna do. It's probably a really bad guess, but I bet you I'm right at least once. <laughs> and maybe we'll get lucky and be right every single time. Okay. And let's just go through and assign R and S and we're gonna see if they match or not. We'll see if we got some lucky guesses in there. So, and we'll see which ones are wrong and then we'll correct them. All right, so for this carbon right here, carbon number two, Oxygen is number one, this carbon's number two, and this carbon's number three, and so one, two, three. That's a left-handed turn. The hydrogen is at the dashed bond that's not drawn in in the back. And so a left-handed turn is indeed going to mean S. And I look up and I'm like, oh, I didn't want it to be S. I wanted it to be R. Oh, well, good, that's easy enough to fix. As long as I have two groups trade places, that turns R into S and S into R. So I'm just gonna make that OH there a dash and the hydrogen that's not drawn in the wedge, which now, instead of being S, would make this 
are. Life is good. So I'm 0 for 1. My guess was wrong, but we were able to easily fix it. Same thing on the next one. 1, 2, 3. It looks like it's R. H is in the back, is number 4, so it really is R. And I wanted it to be S. I'm 0 for 2. So we got to fix this one as well. So we'll get rid of that wedged bond and make the bond of the OH also a dash and the H the wedge. So having two groups trade places inverts it from R. And now it's going to be S. All right, not looking too good here. I'm 0 for 2. We'll go to this one here. So auction's number one. This carbon's number two. This carbon's number three. So one, two, three. And it looks like S. And the H is in the back, so it really is S. And I wanted it to be R. This is not working out so well. I'm 0 for 3. But again, we have a quick fix. We'll just take that wedge bond of the OH, make it the dash, which makes the hydrogen that's attached there the wedge instead. And again, having two groups traded places inverts it from S to R as I want it. Well, I said I think I'd get at least one right. I might be wrong here. Let's take a look. So auction's number one. This carbon's number two. This carbon's number three. And going around, that's a right-handed turn. That looks like R. The hydrogen's in the back. And it really is R. And I wanted it to be R. So it turns out I'm right. <laughs> With my guess of making them all wedges, I was right one out of four times. But even on the three that I was wrong, I could correct them very quickly, switching out the wedge and dash bonds. Cool, and now I've drawn D-glucose. Here I had the Fischer projection, here I've got the bond line structure. Common question on this exam is converting one to the other. And again, don't try and like visualize it three-dimensionally in your head because the bond line is a real three-dimensional portrayal of the entire molecule. The Fischer projection is not, and you're really gonna struggle. Now, one other thing you should know, if I take this bond line structure, and let's just say I plucked its structure off the board and just started spinning it around, rotating it around. So it's the same molecule, you're allowed to do this. So however, if you try to do the same thing with your Fischer projection, being that it's not a real three-dimensional portrayal of the molecule, it doesn't work. If I just say turn this 90 degrees, that's totally different. Because now all of a sudden, if you turn it 90 degrees, again, the verticals are supposed to be dashes, the horizontals wedges, and by rotating it 90 degrees this way, some other changes inadvertently happen just based on what a Fischer projection means. So you're not allowed to just rotate it 90 degrees. So let's say you just flip it over this way. If you flip it over this way, you got problems there as well. Rotating it out of the plane of the board here, 180 degrees, actually changes things too. So cool, there's only one way you're actually allowed to manipulate this lovely Fischer projection that doesn't change it into some other possible stereoisomer. And that's you're allowed to rotate it 180 degrees in the plane of the board. And so if I rotate this all the way around 180, it, is, it would be the same thing again. And therefore, if I rotate it 360, which is double 180, two rotations of 180, 180 once, and then 180 again, I'd be back to the same thing. That's the only rotation that doesn't actually change the stereo chemistry here. So change it to a different stereoisomer. So cool, you can rotate bond line structures all day long and it's the same thing. But because this again is not an, a real three-dimensional portrayal of the molecule, only rotations that are allowed are in the plane and 180 at a time. I mean, obviously you can rotate this 360 in any direction and arrive right back here, but any other rotation besides 360, so the only one that's allowed in the plane, 180 at a time, that's it. Now, if you benefited from this lesson, consider giving me a like and a share. One of the best things you can do to, to benefit the channel. And if you're looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, or if you're looking for practice problems on Fisher projections and multiple chiral centers, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.